Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're going to interview Clay, who owns CNC Motors. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience, and normally we are talking about buying and selling supercars and other things that are related to the supercar ownership experience. And it, by the way, if you happen to need anything for your supercar, go visit my website, normalguysupercar.com, and there you can buy my consultation services and other products that I sell for these supercars. But unfortunately, there's been a lot of bad stuff going on in the supercar world, and it all revolves around CNC Motors. You've heard Shane's story, I've published that, he's given a follow-up, and it's really disheartening. It is a horrible story and unfortunately it sounds like there's a lot of people who are in a similar situation. So we're going to interview Clay who owns CNC Motors and I'm just going to kind of give him the platform and let him say what he wants to say and maybe ask some follow-up questions. Frankly try and understand what's going on and if there's any hope that these people who are in a bad situation can be made whole. So here we go. Here's the interview and I'm going to try and edit it as little as possible and provide you with as many facts as possible. Welcome Clay. Clay is the owner of CNC Motors and I wanted to give you the same opportunity I've given Shane, which is basically I want to lend you my platform to be able to say whatever it is you want to say. As I've stated in uh, another video, I have no agenda here. I don't have anything to gain or lose from this situation. I have no skin in the game. My motivations are concerned for finding out the truth and I'm, I'm worried about people who have reached out to me and said that they're in these positions that they are uh, owed either money or a car or something like that. Hi, my name is Clayton and I'm with CNC Motors. We've been in business for roughly 15 years. Um, we've been a family business this whole time. We started out with a little small warehouse that you know could probably hold uh, three to five cars and we, over the years we've grown it and I think this is this is our fourth location probably be bigger than we ever wanted to go but we're here now so we're we're dealing with it the first kind of thing is what what historically kind of led to this unfortunate situation because I, I feel like in every story it's always a confluence of events right it's never just one thing so what kind of what transpired um, that that kind of happened? I'm not exactly sure. It's it's it could be a combination of we've been in this location since right around August of 2018. Was it a case of too big, too fast? You know, we went from a smaller location where we were selling 30 cars a month, 35 cars a month, and it was easier then. Everybody was happier. We didn't have to work as hard. It was more about the cars and the people. When you come over here and now you're expected to sell anywhere from 80 to 100 cars a month, it's it's a lot more to do. It's a lot more to manage. It's a lot more drama. You need the right accounting people. You need the right people managing your credit lines. We went from having a $6 million credit line to having a $30 million credit line. More people to manage all of that. And then when March came around, it's it's kind of like we were we closed the store for 110 days. We laid off probably 30 of our 40 employees because we were we were going to be closed for some time, and nobody knew are we going to be open back up. We were told all kinds of rumors what was going on overseas in Italy and all these other countries that it could be two or three years before life goes back to normal. So. I don't know the answer. I just kind of have been just rolling with it this whole time. But somewhere along the lines, when the key people went away, I think it just got a little blurry for us on how, what order things needed to be done and, and how how fast they needed to be done. Did you see like a, a, a substantial slowdown in your sales? In March, April, May, um, and in the beginning of June, correct. It was basically, we closed the store, we were operating from our homes, coming to the store to do a delivery. There were some people out there that were saying, well, we don't care about COVID, we're still buying cars and we're still living our lives. And we catered to those. The prices were a lot lower, there was very little profits, but we were, we, we had to go forward. I think it was June it started to pick back up and we were doing great sales again. We were still understaffed. We still didn't have the right amount of people, but we continued to push through. We started experiencing a little bit of uh, slowdown right around Thanksgiving when they tried to do the second stay at home order. They wanted everybody to just stop they were they were talking about you know another big round of this coming out and closures and all that and that's COVID isn't my excuse. COVID didn't cause my problems. My problems were not being prepared for something like that and not being able to maneuver around an obstacle. And at the end of the day, it's it's trial and error. Like if I could go back to March again and do it again, I wouldn't be in this position. 
but I did the best I could during that time. Like I said, if I had a second opportunity to do it again, I, I don't think I would be anywhere near in this position. If we've made some wrongs, we'll right them. And at the end of the day, everything in, in, in our world will go forward and we will make sure everybody on both ends of the stick, whether you're owed the title or a car or money, all the rights will be wronged and there won't be anybody standing there saying what happened. As tough as it is to get through a hard time, it's even harder to do it when you have the amount of people that don't know us at all that are 100% out there for hate. You know what I mean? They're, they're only here to see the crash. They're not here to see anything other than a, a negative. And then they move right on to the next to the next guy who's, who's in the limelight. When March came around, nobody knew what was gonna happen. We had customers calling us. We spoke with our legal counsel. And we spoke with people and they said, well, you know what, man, this could go on for three, four years. This could go on for 12 months. Why don't you just pull out now zero exposure and sit back and i said well because we're we're in this deep enough you know we have our credit line we have our customers we have our employees we're gonna we're gonna see this thing through and me and my wife and my family will we'll see it through there's there's nothing that we won't do to to get through this i try to refrain once in a while from looking at the comments that people send via text message to me i just i try not to read them i i, I would i'm not a I'm not a, one of those guys who likes to be in the limelight. You, you probably haven't seen me on a TV show or a, on an interview at Mecom or any of that stuff. I just, I don't want to be that guy. The comments that people are making out there are just, they're, they're not accurate. And I was told to, to, to not engage with them, to not fight that fight. Like there's people out there saying, oh, you have a, a half million or a million dollar Rolex collection. I don't own a watch. I literally don't own a watch. I don't have a vacation house. I don't even actually own a house. I, I'm a renter now. It's just okay with me and my family. We're happy wherever we're at together. We don't have a beach house. We don't have a lake house. We don't have a plane. I don't have a drug problem. I don't even drink. Never mind do drugs. Like you have a guy out there that's saying that you should drug test me before this interview. So like I don't have much money right now, but if you want to put that guy on a three-way interview right now and ask him how much he's willing to put up there, I'll take a drug test if he's willing to put some money up against it. I don't have these problems because I spent somebody's money taking care of myself or on myself or my family or on a vice. This is, this is because of business decisions that I've made because of a crisis in the world. All my fault. I'm not asked. I'm not, I'm the last guy who says COVID-19, COVID-19. That's COVID-19 is an obstacle. How I maneuver around it and get through it is up to me and my business. I've learned a lot and I've, I've got some things coming down the pipe that are gonna, that's gonna change everything for me. And I, I hope that by the end of next week, I can tell you about them and, and I can bring on some of my people that were as angry as Shane was at me. Like literally, I was so disappointed that I caused so much pain in his life. The simple fact that I could hurt somebody like that bothered me. The only thing I, I, I got going, the only goal I have is to make sure that at the end of the day, not only does he get what he has coming to him, but his opinion of me changes. And that's why it was, it was so nice that he took the time to drive out here. I told my wife, I said, I didn't know if he was gonna punch me in the face when he saw me. But he, he, he said, I'm gonna just shelve it and I'm gonna listen. And, and, and he was a gentleman about that and he's not happy with me still, sure. but at least he's, he's listening to my side of the story. And I, I think that he knows that, that I will write that wrong. And I, I honestly think sometimes that things happen for a reason and I, I'll end up being lifelong friends. He sat down with my wife for a little while and it, it just makes our drive to do the right thing that much better because you see that these are the, these are the people that we wanna be involved in. These are, these are actual human beings that worked hard for their money. We, we've gotta make our rights, our wrongs right. I've made lots of wrong decisions. I've made a lot of right ones too. And when I make a wrong one, I always go back and fix it. I, I hope that I'm given the opportunity and I hope that once the, all the wrongs are right, turned right, I, I'm hoping that people, I don't know the word, are compassionate enough to, to just, to take two minutes and not just grab their money or their car or their title and run but to actually listen to me and just say, what went wrong? Uh, you know, we've done business here for 10 years, what happened? I've had a couple people reach out to me and to show you how one-sided the internet is, they've left 
you know, comments like, oh, maybe ask his side of the story or maybe or I did a transaction with him and it went fine. And they delete those comments immediately because that, 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 that doesn't sell anything when you have success. You know what I mean? We're looking to see the plane go down. That's what we're looking for. And at the end of the day, that's that's what I'm fighting. I'm fighting the people that don't want to see me make it. If you're an innocent bystander and you actually are a normal person with a normal heart, you want to make sure that if an innocent person's wrong, you'd like to see them righted, wouldn't you? You'd want to see that person get paid or get their title or the transaction go through, right? Whether it took a little extra time or not. But when you hinder that opportunity, you're not a good person. In my opinion, it doesn't make any sense to, to spread false narratives and cause that person who's trying to do the right thing more obstacles to overcome in order to do the right thing. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand that. If everyone's just chanting, you know, let it burn, and let your company fail, the people who are currently owed money won't ever see a cent. Correct. The only thing that comes of that situation is you, your family, and any employees that you have are now without jobs. That's it. That's the, the sole outcome. That, that means there's all these other people who are innocent parties who are going to be hurt. There's an entire business that's been around for 15 years that's going to be gone. There is all the goodwill and all the things that you've done prior to this are immediately erased and are, are considered invalid. And, and it's crazy because people come from all over to see our cars and to have a I, good I experience. We, we, we treat everybody like like they're buying the Ferrari Enzo in the showroom. We treat everybody like that. Just, For 15 just, years, we've had nothing but praise. Can we have a CNC shirt? Can we have a belt? Can we have a sticker for a car? Can we have a license plate frame? And it's sad. In a blink of an eye, a group of people can turn that into having a bad thing. It's crazy, the, the power of the internet. It's crazy on the amount of people that would rather see the crash and burn versus the success story. I, could, I couldn't imagine being an artist or a, an actor or anybody who needed social media to be successful. You know, you have a bad album that comes out and all the bad people that say something about you are a movie star and his movie wasn't that great. I just, I couldn't imagine having to deal with that 24 hours a day. Like I've lived most of my life and I haven't had this issue. Now my family's living with it. And you know, I wish that it was a way it was just me. They didn't, but people are relentless. People are saying, well, uh, we're gonna hurt, not only hurt him, but we're gonna hurt his family too. You know, my, my, my kids are getting text messages. My wife's getting text messages. It's just, it's just not a, it's not a humane thing to do. You have a problem, it's with me. It's not with, with anybody else. Hopefully uh, as the next week comes through, or maybe I'll get an opportunity to speak with you again. And I would love to. I'd like to tell you, the, tell you the progress that we've made. And I would really like, at the end of the day, if I, if I get everything done right, if I come through on my end, like I've told everybody I would, what, what's left? Who's left, to, who's left to say anything about me? Was I late? Yeah, I was, I'm sorry about that. If I need to compensate you for that, I will. But at the end of the day, if I get all my wrongs righted, these guys will still have this hate in their heart and will still continue to talk bad about me, to, to just try and cause us harm. Because it, it's never about, it's never been about, did that person get paid? Did this person get paid? It's never been about that. It's only been about, we've got a target. We we've got to somebody to crush. Yeah, that's they what wanna, it's been about. There are a lot of people who just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, I think most people don't. They don't want to even see the opportunity to hear the, what's going on. You know, yeah. there's there's all kinds of situations in the world, whether it comes to politics or high school or whatever. That we don't. You never know the true story. We automatically find ourselves judging the situation without the facts, and it's. It's a tough position to be in. There'll yeah. be people out here that, that will comment and say things that are, you know, it, I can't control that. Like I said, it, it's it's a it's a nice opportunity to sit down and, and actually talk with you. This is the first time I've done something like this, but to basically get it off my chest that, you know, I, I just basically have my wife I work with. You know, me and my wife talk about it every night and we sure. try and make the best plans that we can every day for the following day. And You've kind of touched on it and I'm, I'm assuming there's probably 
business and legal things that you're not allowed to discuss, but you mentioned that yeah. you're trying to get to a position where you can make everyone whole. Um, Correct. Can you go into that or whatever degree you're allowed to go into that? Yeah, we, we have a couple um, large amount of money, large amounts of money that are coming to us. That is our money. Like, for example, we paid out, I think, a little over $800,000 on Friday. Called up our clients. We had our list. We went out and paid them. And we, we did the best we could with the amount of money that showed up on Friday. We're in the position now that hopefully by the end of next week, not only will we have a good announcement to put out there, but we'll also be able to wrap up. You know, I'm a pretty optimistic person. A very, very large amount of that, if not all of it, going forward will be easy. We've made all the wrong decisions. We've made all the errors. It's such a clear path to go forward. It's so much easier to do it the second time. We lost so many good employees. I had people that worked here that were not only family members, that were considered family members, people that basically were your reputation. You know, I, I still to this day have people come in and ask about the employees that are no longer here and the amount of love and respect that they have for them is through the roof. They were actually the reason why we were able to get to this level. It was a good group of people that worked here. It's a shame that this happened. It is a shame that they all ended up going elsewhere. It's now an, uh, it's a restarting point for us. You know, it's it's new people and it's it's rebuilding the brand and we're going to go forward. We're going to go forward as a team and we've got some great people here now. We're going to go forward knowing more as prepared as you can be for the second round of <laughs> of of a world that can can turn on you who if somebody told you somebody came to you and said well oh, there's a flu that's going to come out and it's going to shut the world down for a year what would you have said yeah. come on man if anybody who's owned a business through this they, they've seen the effects of it i have several friends that own restaurants that have told me how hard it's been uh, you know other small businesses and it, it hasn't been easy for anybody so and it's uh, and it's really not easy when you make the wrong decisions and then in a in a hostile environment try and fix them people are already saying oh cnc motors is going to go bankrupt we, we we haven't even consulted with a bankruptcy attorney uh, another big thing that's going around is there's another video that another youtuber filmed where basically they came up to your place and said, hey, look, there's no cars here. There's no way, like they're already shut down. There, there's, all, there's all kinds of those false things that somebody hired a lady, a picket lady to go stand on the corner so they could take a picture of her and then she was gone. There's a guy that um, he went out and he did that whole like Tim Tebow thing, I think they call uh, it. Yeah. Um, where he, he it was like CNC was dead and he the you know the YouTubers are going crazy. We don't have any cars in our parking lot when we're closed. We pull everything inside. You know we we put two blockers up and away we go. It's do we have a lot less cars? Yeah, we had a we had a upper twenty million dollar credit line. We we had a lot of cars. Like if you go to our website and you look at the opening video of our store and see the amount of units that we used to carry, it was through the roof. And ever since these guys you know decided they wanted to try and take us down ruin us people that have had their consignment cars here if there, there's people that have come and picked them up like i said i'm not only trying to get through a vicious year i'm now getting through a vicious year and having to prove to every single person that i talk to that i don't have a 70 foot yacht and a beach house and a plane and a million dollars worth of rolexes and all the other stuff that people say i don't have any of that I have a very, very simple, modest life. And I find myself for the first time ever having to prove that mm -hmm. every time I talk to somebody. I'll just have to wait and see, um, you know, at the end of the day, do you believe somebody who's never met me that is telling you a story about me? Or do you, do you, you want to ask me a question and decide whether I'm telling you the truth or not? People who pulled their consignment cars or people who in the future would want to do consignment with you, what would you say to them? We have people consign cars yesterday, the day before, the day before. We have lots of positive people in the community and in the car community that have done business with us and understand A, that uh, we might be running a little bit behind, but B, still want to do business with us. There's people that have pulled their car out and said, soon as this cools down, we'll be right back with you. But you know, they're saying a lot of nasty things. Somebody who called yesterday and said, oh, I heard your building was boarded up. 
who, who starts a rumor like that, man? Who would want to be responsible to cause that kind of pain to somebody? The building's not boarded up. We come here every day, all day, my whole family, my wife and my kids, my employees, we come here and we work all day long. My building's not boarded up. Are there no cars in my parking lot at night? There's no cars out there because we pull them inside. Do we have less cars? We got a lot less cars. That's a fact. Like I said, hopefully by next week, we'll be able to announce some of the things that we've been working on and we'll go forward. I don't know what other reason, what, what they can come up with next, why to hate me. For the first time in my, in my career, I, ha I haven't been attacked like this before ever. So the first time ever, I now stay, take a step back and, and go, I shouldn't have judged that person. I shouldn't have booed at that guy when he didn't score the goal. I, I guess for the first time I've been really hurt by it. And I now understand the power of what I can cost somebody by not using my head, by not using facts and just going with the crowd. There's another rumor that the building's already sold. The building is getting sold, correct. We're, we're selling the building okay. and we are renting the building back for 36 months. Out of the equity of the building, of course, people are being paid and we're also prepaying our rent for our lease so that we have no overhead and we can thrive a little bit better during this tough time. And I have an option to purchase my building back at a set number over the next 36 months. So I have I have the opportunity to get get no overhead come in here and do as best as I can, and then purchase the building back. So that's that's part of the, the, the game plan there. The game plan is, is, you know, with less cars obviously means less profits. It's gonna take a little time to build everybody's trust back up, but hopefully next week we'll have some really big news on some, some big events that we've been working on for about six weeks now. If everything goes the way optimistic Clay thinks, um, We'll be right back in the running by the end of the week next week. I apologize for the last year if things got a little bit out of control and you were delayed on your payment or your title or your registration. None of that was malicious. That just isn't who we are. But if it was out of my hands, it was out of my hands. There's nothing I can do about that. I, I'm learning from my mistakes. I think what I, more than anything, I just, just want a fair opportunity. The long and short of it is if these people win, and they do cause me enough time and they I can't overcome the rumors and the bad press and let, let's just I don't think it will happen I I think that our community that we deal with will will help us thrive if you if you could pull a group of those people away and say well tell us what do you, what do you win if you closed his business down if you got, let's just say you push so hard and spread so many things about them that you closed their business down what is your reason for it for putting 10 to 15 people out of jobs these are jobs that aren't easy to get right now sales jobs aren't everywhere service department those jobs aren't easy to get right now there's a lot of shops that are running on bare minimum staff right now all the the taxes and the city fees and the license fees and, and all these little companies the guys who come and wash our cars once a week where do they go it's a never-ending chain of people that all eat off of the same plate we put enough out there for everybody. And at the end of the day, if we go away, that goes away. And let's just say, for example, the gentleman who comes and cleans our cars. Well, what happens if we were that fine line between him keeping his business open and not? How many people are affected in his chain then? And it's just a never ending. I'm not sure how somebody could want to play a role in crippling that. I don't understand that. Now, if I hated somebody so much and I wanted to cause them harm, but my harm would mean there would be a line in the sand and everybody on the other side of that line would then lose something, whether it was a job or payment for their car or title for their car. Do I hate somebody enough to cause that pain? No, the answer would be no. What goes through somebody's mind that wants to do that? I've met Shane and Shelly. Is it Shell or Shelly? Shelly. Okay, you call her Shell though a lot. Yeah. I've met them so many times. The fact that I could, I, I'd go home and I was so upset, I'd be in tears some night that I could cause somebody that kind of pain. I'll be right back. I believe everything in life happens for a reason. I'm, I'm praying that these bad experiences have a, a good reason for happening. I'm praying that Shane forgives me 
I'm praying that me and my wife become closer with his family and can somehow do good things together for the future. We're not trying to show anybody up or prove anybody wrong. We just want to maintain our reputation of the, what we've built over the last 15 years. People have been coming here and having a great experience that whole time, and we want to continue it. We know we've let some people down, but it doesn't mean they're, they're out. It doesn't mean they're not going to be made whole. It's just we, we've got to just finish up and apologize and and hopefully they forgive us for our errors this thank was, you for your time man i appreciate you even you know it's you, you besides shane it's the first time i've ever actually been able to tell our side of the story you know because when somebody comes in guns a blazing you, you don't have an opportunity to uh well they have an agenda then you know th those people come in with an agenda yeah they're, they're, I, I just I, had a, I had a real nice gentleman came in we just sold his car he's scheduled to get paid on wednesday and um he was concerned. Mm -hmm. He's done several transactions with us. He's got a family. He was selling his vehicle to for for his son to go to college, and he goes this stuff on the. I said, "There's no doubt in my mind. I'm not upset for you coming in here and questioning me, asking me what's going on." We spent 15 minutes together. He was an awesome person, and hopefully, I'll, I'll do what I said on Wednesday and. At the end of the day, I think it will make us better friends for it. I think we'll be better for it. But he at least gave me the opportunity to come in and, and ask. He just didn't jump on the wagon of hate. He came in there and he goes, I, I need to talk to you. I need to hear it from you. It, it, was a, it was nice to see somebody come in with that attitude versus, okay, man, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. And if there's anything else I can do for you, please let us know. Absolutely. Hey, thank, thank you for okay, your man. time. Well, it's... Uh almost midnight and I just finished editing up that interview and uh, normally a lot of times I will film my reactions immediately after doing these sorts of things and this one it was uh, really intense that interview although uh, it edited down to about 25 minutes I actually was interviewing him for about an hour and a half there was very very little that he asked me to cut out um, only because of some concerns about situations that might be legally binding him not to talk about it. Nothing was off limits. Uh, he seemed very candid and answered everything I asked. I'm not going to really speculate on the situation at this point. I think I'm going to reserve my judgment for uh, another video. I think we will clearly have to have some follow-ups. I am hoping uh, that Shane is made whole sometime this week. So obviously if any of those sorts of things happen, I will let you know. And honestly, any of you who are in Shane's situation. If you're one of the people who have not been uh, made whole, let me know if you do get made whole or if you haven't been made whole. And if you haven't, then let's try and make that happen somehow because I would love to see everyone come out okay. Ultimately, that would be my goal is to make sure everyone is okay. I don't want to just burn everything down. That doesn't help anyone. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Uh, that does help me out and give me the thumbs up. Uh, those things do promote my videos and YouTube's algorithm and I appreciate when you guys do that. So thank you again. And again, if you have any supercar parts that you need to get or services, go check out my website, normalguysupercar.com. We will have lots of car stuff coming your way, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Don't forget we are gonna continue working on my Ferrari 599 manual conversion project. We're gonna have that set up and running very soon. So we've got the parts coming in just shortly so stay tuned for that it's gonna be sweet